players, all right? So I'm gonna use a football analogy, but for those of you that may play football or really love the game, which obviously football is important around here because you all are defending regional and sectional champions, right? Good football team, so you understand. There are people on the team that are difference makers, all right? Those aren't the people that sit down on the bench and guard the water cooler. Those are the people that when the game's on the line or when things are tough, they're like, coach, I want it. Let me have the ball. Hey, coach, put me in. I want to make the play. Guess what a coach loves? When he has a team full of difference makers. It doesn't mean that you're always in the game, but what it does mean is that we can count on each other to get the job done no matter what it is and no matter when we're called on. But being a difference maker has everything to do with being able to execute the basics and execute your assignments, whatever it may be, and being able to push the envelope for whatever it is that you want or aspire to be or that you want to do in life, but do it to the fullest. Don't accept anything less than your best. And remember, this was one that my dad taught me when I was young. He always told me, he said, uh, well, he didn't always, he, he said it once and I kind of got in trouble, so it stuck. I didn't have to, he didn't have to repeat it. Uh, but he said, son, there's no vacation from greatness. And I was like, you're just a dumb old man. What are you talking about? You have no clue what I'm going through, you know, as a freshman in high school and playing varsity football and the stressors and the pressures. You have no idea. Uh, well, he did. He knew. He'd been there, done that. You know, he just happened to be 30 years older than me, but he'd done it. Uh, and what he was referencing was I, I was slipping in my grades. Uh, my parents are pretty strict on my schoolwork. Uh, I was raised by educators. My father is a, uh, the dean at the School of Theology at Virginia Union University in Richmond, Virginia. My mom is a career educator. She talks, uh, she's taught special education and still, even though she's retired, takes short-term voluntary assignments to go back and help the school system. So my mother used to say to me, son, I have a lot of patience. I teach and educate children who have a justifiable reason or excuse to not make the grade. You don't. God gave you a brain. He gave you a mouth. He, you're able to talk. You're able to communicate. You're able to think. You're able to process. You're able to do all those things. There is no excuse for you to walk in this house with anything less than a B. So when I got less than a B, I got in trouble. So I don't know if you all have it here, but we have this little thing called midterm, you know, uh, notices that go home. And you only got them if you had a deficiency. So they became known as deficiency notices. If you were borderline getting a D, you got a deficiency notice. So in science, which was one of my better classes, I love science, it's one of my favorites. We had a big research project. And, you know, me being a freshman on the football team and thinking I'm hot stuff, I kept putting off the work and putting off the work. And, you know, I'm contributing on the varsity team. I'm good. You know, let me slide. Well, I got a deficiency notice because I had not done the preliminary parts of my research project. You know, I hadn't turned in my hypothesis and my abstract and everything. You know, I had kind of compiled the stuff, but I kind of I hadn't done the official thing and turned it in. So my grade reflected poorly because of it. And uh, you know, I obviously got in trouble. I can remember the day my mom came home, she got the mail, saw the deficiency notice, and I heard the door slam, and I heard in a loud, loud voice, Aaron Quincy Kenny. And I don't know if you all know this, but anytime your parents use your entire name, you're probably in trouble. So I knew right then I was in trouble, right? So she had some choice words for me that I cannot repeat in this mixed audience. But it got the point across real well that she was not happy. and. Uh, I started doing the official part of my research project in that moment. But uh, my dad was the one to kind of come pick up the pieces and the, you know, the crumbled person after mom was done, kind of putting foot in places where the sun don't shine. Dad was the one that kind of picked you up and brushed you off and then popped you again and said, all right, get to it. So uh, when dad got home, he said, son, you know what? I knew something wasn't right. And I said, well, what do you mean? He said, well, you know, I've been having to tell you over and over again to do your chores. I've been having to, you know, your room's a mess, you know, you're doing good in football, but I mean, everything else about your life is a wreck. 
And I said, well, what does that have to do with it? How does that let you know my grade was going to be bad? He said, well, there's no vacation from greatness, son. I said, what? There's no vacation from greatness. And he didn't expand any further than that. He just left it at that. And I'm like, well, what is that supposed to mean? And then over the years, I learned. All right, it all carries over. If you're going to be great at anything, that means you're going to be great at everything. Because guess what? If you find an area of your life where you're subpar and not doing your best and not pushing the envelope and doing all you can, it's going to carry over into the parts. Everything. So I begin to learn, you know, okay, if that means, you know, I don't like, I don't like English, but I'm going to do my absolute best and be great at it because I love science and I love you know, social studies, but I can't be great at those if I'm not great at English too. Or if I don't give it all I've got for every class, you know, I can't be a great football player if I don't, if I'm not a great student first, football's not a reality. I don't get to play. That was the reality. So that began to carry over in all parts of my life. And I still try to live that way today. Now I'm not perfect. I make plenty of mistakes and I'm human. You know, there are times and have been times where I take shortcuts. You know, while I was in college, there was a whole lot of work. And I'm not going to lie to you, there were days where I took shortcuts and didn't take the hard way. But, you know, the objective was for me is to take no vacation from greatness. And it's not okay to make excuses. So there is no vacation from greatness. So if you're going to be a great athlete, be a great student, be a great citizen, be a great classmate, be a great steward with what God has blessed you with. Everybody in here has a unique set of talent and skills. Every last one of you. Use them. Use them to the best of your ability. And show up and show out. Uh, I got a little a little sermon at my, or not sermon, I'm not going to preach to you. I'm, not, I'm about done because I know we're on a time crunch. But um, there's a couple, one, one more thing I want to share with you about, you know, challenging you to show up and show out. You know, they, they call, you know, if, if, I'm, if I'm looking forward or down the road to something, what do they call that? It's what? You can answer, say it. They call it the what? If I'm looking forward, something that hasn't happened yet, it's happening when? Future, right? Something that happened yesterday or long ago, what do they call it? The past, right? What do they call it today? The present. Anybody ever do a correlation? The present? What do you get for your birthday? What do you get for Christmas? You get presents. What are presents also known as? Gifts. Well, guess what today is? A gift. All right. How many of you take a gift and throw it right back in the face of the person who gave it? Anybody? Anybody ever done that? I know I have, and I like getting gifts, right? So remember today is a gift. The present is a gift. You're not guaranteed tomorrow, so make the most of today. And for, for, for goodness sake, don't let the lives of those who have gone on before us go or be in vain. You don't, the last thing you want to do is have regrets. Make sure you tell your family members, your significant others, that you love them every day and every chance you get. Because just like today is a gift, it is. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. The next breath isn't guaranteed. So remember that. That's a challenge, and it's tough. But I would encourage you to do that. And I also encourage you to remember that there's no vacation from greatness. All right? No vacation from greatness. I'm going to leave you all with a little, a little poem that, again, this is something from my dad. My dad had a huge influence in my life. So uh, it's two, two things. I'm going to give you the poem, uh, the poem second. But this first one is just an excerpt from a, a sermon that he, that he preached and I took notes on him wanted to make sure that I remembered, and I felt like it's fitting for what we're talking about today. We err when we measure success by focusing on outcomes. Life seldom unfolds as we plan it, and faith tells us that our lives are part of an ever-unfolding work of God. In this light, success is less about outcomes than about the integrity and enthusiasm of our efforts. All we do is sow seed with purpose. Placed in God's care, these seeds take root, growing and bearing fruit that others will reap. All right, that, I know it may be difficult to draw a correlation, but that no vacation from greatness and that statement, they all go hand in hand. Don't get caught up and tied up into what somebody else or so-and-so says is successful, because ultimately, 
success is not about the outcome. It's about the enthusiasm and effort in which we pursue that which God has called us to do and be. We stand on the shoulders of those who went before us. All right, this is the poem, and it's pretty catchy and good. All right. I'd rather see a certain than hear one any day. I'd rather one walk with me than merely tell the way. The eyes are better pupil and more willing than the ear. Fine counsel is confusing, but the examples are always clear. And the best of all preachers are the men who live their creeds, for to see good put into actions is what everybody needs. I soon can learn to do it. If you'll let me see it done, I can watch your hands in action, but your tongue too fast may run. And the lecture you deliver may be very wise and true, but I'd rather get my lessons by observing what you do. For I might misunderstand you and the high advice you give, but there's no misunderstanding how you act and how you live. That's a, a poem by Edward A. Guess. Uh, very powerful. In other words, you all may not know it, you may not think it, but there's always somebody watching. You already role models, believe it or not. You think that young people in middle school, elementary school, aren't just chomping at the bit and excited for the day they get to be a purple tiger at Watertown High School. They are. They're all looking up to you. And you're now at a point in your life where your decisions begin to matter and impact what your future looks like. So I leave you with that challenge to be difference makers, to show up and show out. And remember, there's no vacation from greatness. So push the envelope, do the very best you can in everything that you do. Thank you.